So I go to play a game against the Charlotte Bobcats, thinking it's going to be an easy victory, right? No, the Bobcats are somehow 10-4 and four to start the year, as you guys saw right there. So this game was actually a battle of two really good teams. At, at this point, my team, the Sixers, we were 10-5, and five, and the Bobcats were 10-4. and four. So unlike in real life, the Bobcats in this game are actually somehow doing really well. They are currently second in the Eastern Conference behind the Miami Heat. I think uh, I think the Sixers, my team, were fourth or so uh, behind the Heat, the Bobcats, and then the Knicks, and then it's us. So we're doing pretty good, but man, these Bobcats somehow in NBA 2K13 are balling this year. And, and as you guys are going to see this game, this was a very, very close game. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but it was a very, very close game. And that was a nice pump fake right there. I just totally uh, got that guy up in the air. That's one of the uh, main things I love about being a three-point shooter um, is, is they fall for your three-point shots a, a lot more than normal because obviously you're a threat from three-point. But yeah, anyways, so I don't really understand how the Bobcats are doing so well this season. I mean, it's not its not like they're rated well at all in this game. I believe they're rated the lowest. They're rated like 72 overall, and, and the Sixers here, I think we're rated like 80, 86 or 87, something something around there. Um, so it's it just like, it doesn't make sense that, that in simulation games, the Bobcats have, have been going 10 and four. And I haven't really looked at their schedule, but still, the Bobcats in, in the real NBA, as, mo as many of you guys know, are one of the worst, if not the worst, basketball team uh, in, in the NBA. Last year, the Bobcats had the lowest win percentage of any team in NBA history. They had just over a .1 winning percentage. And, and I believe to end the season, they ended the season on like a 24-game losing streak or something absolutely crazy like that. So, um, yeah, I was just completely shocked. Seeing, seeing that the Bobcats are are ranked up so high, and also what was really weird is is I looked at um, the like the I was looking at the, at the the league leaders for points and whatnot, and it wasn't who you would expect at the top. I mean, you guys would expect your LeBron Jameses, your Kevin Durant's, your Kobe Bryant's to be at the top of the of the uh, of the scoring in the NBA, but it's not true at all. The number one scorer so far in the season is Russell Westbrook, and number two is uh, Ben or what's his name? Uh, something Gordon, Eric Gordon, Eric Gordon from the New Orleans Hornets is number two in the NBA in scoring. As you see in the last ten games, I'm actually going ham. I have 25 points a game over the last uh, ten games. That's all. That's also partly due to my uh, 53 point outburst. Um, that, that I had a few games ago. I was going to show it, but it was really just, it, it wasn't, I don't think it was a very entertaining game. I, I had 15 three-pointers that game, and many of the three-pointers were very similar. Um, like, very similar to that one right there. I just go right by the guy and throw up a three-pointer. Um, so, so, this game I actually still am playing on the second easiest difficulty. There's four difficulties, and I'm playing on the second easiest difficulty in this game. I am definitely thinking about moving, moving my difficulty up one more. I'm not playing on Hall of Fame like Chris Move does, because I actually tried playing on Hall of Fame for, for for one game, and it was impossible. Hall, Hall of Fame is very, very hard to do, so, um, but I am thinking about playing on the second hardest uh, difficulty, because I do feel like I'm getting better at this game. I'm starting to get, get the hang of things, and, and I just feel like playing on the second east, easiest difficulty is, is really, it's, it is a little bit too easy, so even though you do still lose some games. Like personally, for my personal player, it's too easy. As you see, I'm I'm open so much from the three-point range. But like right there, I'm just wide open. And if I was playing on a harder difficulty, it would be more realistic. And I, and I, and, and I want to make this game as realistic as possible, because um, because that's that's one of the things that people love about NBA 2K. Um, the, the games are, are normally very realistic, except for several a few things. The games are normally realistic. And look at that. I want to show you guys this in replay mode. I was so confused when this happened. He literally just took the ball out of my hands. It's like, as I'm talking about re real realism, that happens. That's pretty funny. Um, I mean, he just like grabbed the ball out of my hands like it was absolutely nothing. I was like, <laughs> when that happened, I was just, I was so completely confused because I mean, in the real NBA, you're not, the guy's not going to be holding the ball right there, and someone just grabs it out of your hands. No, that's not going to happen. And it's just like, what the heck? So, also, I want to talk a little bit about 
like my first impressions of NBA 2K13. Because I do have many things that I love about this game, but there's also a few small things that actually kind of frustrate me. I mean, like, it's nothing like Call of Duty. I'm not raging at my, at my TV. I've, I mean, oh, look at that nice little fadeaway three-pointer. That was nice. But yeah, like I was saying, there's nothing really major about this game that's that frustrates me. Uh, except that right there. That is one of the main things that just happened right there that really frustrates me. I just drained two straight three-pointers to bring our team back really close. And then the coach just takes me out randomly. I mean, don't you want me in the game to hit those three-pointers to pull us back into the game? And, and then after I come out and I come back in, we're down by six again after I cut it to a two-point deficit. So it's just things like that um, that, that really just don't make, sen make too much sense at all in this game. I mean, I when I was out on the floor, I was bringing the team back, and then all of a sudden, the coach just decides to take me out. Now, I don't think that's Doug Collins, um, Doug Collins being a bad coach, because in real life, Doug Collins is a good coach. I'm a Sixers fan in real life, so um, I, I think I know quite a bit about the Sixers because I, I am a fan of them. And Doug Collins is not a bad coach, so he would not just take you out if you hit two or three straight three pointers like I did. But yeah, anyways. Um, as you guys have seen here, I'm just kind of hitting a lot of three-pointers. I'm getting, I actually get quite a few assists this game. This, this game is actually my first ever double-double. Uh, -double. Um, and and one of the main reasons it's my first double-double is, I haven't been playing point guard like, at all. I'm playing shooter. Shoot, like, whenever I come in, like, I'm a starter right now. Um, on the team, uh, I start at shooting guard, but my main position is pointing point guard. But the reason that I'm starting at shooting guard, not point guard. And you saw right there, Sessions just took the ball out of Drew Holiday's hand. He just snatched it right out of hand, right out of his hand like it was nothing. But like I was saying, uh, the reason I'm, I'm starting at shooting guard and not point guard is because we have Drew Holiday on our team. And Drew Holiday, by the way, is the most underrated point guard in the league. I believe he's the top five point guard behind behind your uh, Rajon Rondos, your Russell Westbrooks, your Derrick Roses, your Chris Pauls. So I think, to be honest, um, uh, Drew Holiday is the fifth best point guard in the NBA. In real life, he's averaging 19 points and 9 assists a game, so he's a really good player. And in this game, he's very good as well. And and that's why I'm not starting at, at point guard. So I actually, as much as it kills me, since I really do love the Sixers and I love playing for them because they're my team in real life and it just makes the game that much more enjoyable, I actually might ask for a trade because I want to, to play point guard and get because I I made this player to play point guard, not to play shooting guard. And I feel like the point guard experience, you get you just get to do so much more. Because with shooting guard, it seems like all I'm doing is shooting the ball and with, with an occasional pass. Like even though I have 11 assists in this game, I'm only averaging 4 assists a game. I'm averaging like 25 points or 23 points and 4 assists a game. But, and it's just like... That's not what I signed up for. I signed up to be to be a true point guard, so I might demand a trade. Tell me in the comment section if you guys want to see me uh, demand a trade because I think it would be better for me to go to like um, a, a team that needs a point guard. For example, the the Hornets don't really have a point guard. The Wizards don't really have a, a good point guard. Uh, I don't think the Golden State Warriors have a point guard, do they? I'm not sure, but there's there's plenty of teams out there that don't have a solid point guard that I could really really do well for, but. Anyways, that's all I have to say um, on the game. Uh, I really am enjoying this game so far. This is a very fun game. And there's many game modes b besides for my career that are very fun. But yeah, anyways, as you guys are seeing here, that last bucket there, that, that put the game out of reach. It was, it was really frustrating. I missed two three-pointers near, near the end of the game that were pretty open shots I should have made. And it was just like, it was really weird. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, and I'll, I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the press conference. You were really showcasing your passing skills out there tonight, getting double-digit assists for the first time in your career. What was your game plan going in that led to your setting up your teammates so well? My teammates were great out there tonight, first and foremost. They were really the ones doing the hard work. I just tried to get them the ball when one of them got open. When they're finishing like that, it makes my job easy.